What's up, YouTube? Heavy coming to you. Captain Awesome Fish Room. Jeff Chromis Pro by bringing y'all a video, finally, again. Uh, told y'all we'd do a freshwater update. Um, sorry, I got a little thing on my phone that was telling me something. Um, but we're going to do a freshwater update, then we're going to check out the reef because I finally got the lights up. Uh, so, corals, um, probably this week. Uh, I have a few corals that I'll be bringing home. Uh, beautiful corals. Really excited about the reef tank. Uh, Y'all haven't already seen. Uh, oh my god, stop it. Anyways, uh, so let's check out what we got going on in here and um, we'll go from there. Alright, I hope y'all are excited because I'm excited to bring it to you as always. tank here we have the wolf fish uh, this guy is starting to be really responsive check him out check him out uh, it's a beautiful animal uh, the patterns on this I mean oh my goodness uh, he does big rig come on man uh, he does eat pellets now uh, but I still feed him krill uh, you can see that he's doing really well uh, he's not necessarily aggressive but uh, you know, some people would consider him aggressive because he's really food aggressive, I guess, or food responsive is a better word. Uh, I don't really like calling fish aggressive. Um, you know, there's a difference between aggression and predation, and of course, any predator fish is gonna seem aggressive to people because of their response to food, right? So, uh, so I don't like really calling fish aggressive. Um, well, this guy is a predator uh, and we'll move over here uh, maybe we'll do a feeding video sometime and I'll show you how that guy eats you can see my gulper uh, recently got rid of one of these guys uh, finally decided on the one that I wanted to keep which is this guy right here he's doing well uh, these two will be going inside I want to say big rig sink um, once I get him into the 300 that I just got uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll know that I just got a 300 for Big Rig. Really excited about that. Uh, I planned on having it put up this week. Um, not sure if that's going to go through or not, but it's a huge possibility. The tank and uh, the stand, well the tank mainly is god awful heavy. I mean, it is god awful heavy. It's all glass. Um, it's already drilled. It has four inch holes, right? So. Uh, there, I mean, there's room for four-inch bulkhead. It's it's retarded. I mean, it really is heavy as all be. Uh, it took me and one, two, three, four other guys to actually move it into my garage. And from where we moved it from, off of a trailer, I mean, it was literally uh, about 14 feet, 14 feet. So uh, that was pretty crazy, but. Uh, I'll do a video whenever we get that all set up. Uh, let's check out some other fish. Alright, so here we have the um, silver dollar tank. <laughs> Y'all know what that means. Um, yeah, it's doing well. Got a lot of java moss in here. You can see uh, I need to do a gravel back. I've been power feeding this guy. Uh, he doesn't really come out much anymore. Um, He's getting big. I mean, he doesn't really, he doesn't really like uh, the light and stuff. But the Java moss is doing really well in here. Uh, you can see I have a dead prawn right there. Need to pull him out. But uh, don't waste any time on this tank because obviously he's not going to come out and show himself. So we'll move on. All right. So inside the 40 breeder, I have a few things going on. Uh, one, 
most importantly is that guy right there. That is my Jardini Arowana. Uh, really enjoying keeping him. He's eating veggie krill currently. Uh, and I also have a few grow outs for the shop in here. Uh, some Invakiri Bitchers. Uh, I took, I think, six of them uh, from the lot that we had at work and I brought them home. I just recently took up three back to the shop because somebody was interested in buying them. And when I took those three up there, uh, it was amazing at the difference in the growth, the color, and uh, all that stuff whenever I got them uh, back up there. Uh, you know, the guys that are up at the shop that stayed there, they're eating uh, Southern Delight as well. But these guys, uh, with as much as I do water changes, uh, like up at the shop, we do water changes once a week. Uh, here inside this tank, I do water changes probably four to five times a week. And uh, it just shows a great difference. Uh, it was, it's just a huge difference. I mean, they're just a lot bigger, a lot, uh, you know, they're just filling in more. And, you know, that's due to the to the extra water changes and stuff. But uh, this Jardini Arowana, if I can get a good shot of them, I'm really excited about this guy. Uh, I've been wanting to keep an Arowana for some reason for uh, a few months now. And uh, my boss at work brought this guy in and, you know, hooked me up with him at a really good deal. Uh, so I'm really excited to have him inside my fish room. Uh, as far as plants, there's a lot of java fern, java moss, uh, some swords in here. I uh, haven't really really been focusing on plants lately, which brings me to my next shot here. You can see the uh, 50 long planted tank is now gone and done with. Uh, that's one of the tanks that I have broken down along with the 55 right there that's half full and kind of still running, I guess. Um, I'm going to break that down this week as well. Um, and this 29 down here. Uh, fish room is a huge mess right now. Uh, you can see I have stuff laying everywhere. My dog, Taco. Taco. Taki. Hey, Taki. Hey, boy. Hey, Taki. Yeah, little Taco. Come here, Taki. Say hi. Come here. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Uh, this is Taco, my Chihuahua. Watch, maybe he'll do his face. Taki. The Taki! Come on, Taki! What are you doing, boy? Yeah, he's not gonna do it. Um, but yeah, so we're breaking down the 55. Eventually, this tank is going away as well, the 10 gallon uh, with the silver dollar. Uh, so, uh, these two tanks are also gonna be broken down. That's gonna end up as a frag tank uh, for uh, to supplement my reef tank. If I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know. But uh, eventually that's going to... What's going on with the lighting here? Okay, that's just brighter. Let's fix that. Okay, there we go. Uh, so eventually that will be broken down and swapped over. Uh, the fish that are in there will be going inside Big Rig's tank, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. Um, or no, I'm sorry. Uh, the Giardini. Uh, those Invocary Bitchers are about to go back up to the shop because they're a lot bigger now. Um, and we need to make some money off of those. Uh, these guys will be going inside Big Rig's old tank while Big Rig goes inside of this 300. Uh, of course, once the wolfish gets, wolfish gets bigger, uh, we'll have to do something about him as well. And uh, the sump and everything with the planted tank, and it's just a mess, guys. It's, I mean, look at it. It's just a mess. Uh, you can see I'm still feeding Southern Delight uh, and a few other miscellaneous things that I've taken off my shelf up here. You can see, look at this. It's just ridiculous. You never know how much stuff you have until you try to move it. Um, here's the 120 tank. I uh, had somebody ask me the other day how long. Oh, here's the the grow outs for the shop. A couple of motas. Um, had somebody say they were both females. Uh, I'm not completely sure on that. Uh, they are too small to vent. Uh, they may be females, uh, but the way that they act uh, just seems. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. They might be, they might not be. Uh, it's not really important, but what is that? Oh, I have some food stuck on the glass there. Look at that. Yeah, it's not going to focus. 
Uh, but like I was saying, I had somebody talking about this algae the other day whenever I posted a video of the modas, and they were asking how to get that. Um, I don't know. This tank is, uh, let's see. Yeah, this tank is now the oldest tank in my fish room. I don't know if it's been the oldest. I don't know. Uh, but it's been set up for a long time, so I don't, I don't ever scrub the algae off of my back glass, the side glass, or anything in between. The only algae that comes off of this tank is the front glass because I like to see into it. Uh, so if you let it grow, uh, it'll grow, you know. Um, this tank here gets water changes probably three, sometimes four times a week, I want to say. Uh, generally I do it every other day, so let's say Monday, skip Tuesday, Wednesday, skip Thursday, Friday, skip Saturday, and I don't do it Sunday, and then I do another Monday, so yeah, it's about four times within, uh, within a week, respectively, three to four times. Uh, you can see I have the AP100 up and running inside that cluttered up mess down there, uh, have it run into a couple tanks, but... Uh, what else is in here? Um, I have, let's see, I have two red-tailed catfish. Don't worry, guys. Uh, they're grow-outs for the shop. Um, I'm growing them out for this gentleman uh, that wants to keep a few red-tails. Uh, and he wants them to be a little bit bigger. Uh, right now, the red-tails are only about this big. Um, they started out about like that big, so they've gained maybe a half inch. Uh, and I also have that uh, Chara catfish. I can't remember the name of it. It's been a while since I've spoken about that catfish. I'm trying to find them so you don't get an eye on them. That guy is getting enormous. I'm um, really enjoying having him. Oh, there he is right there, back there. Um, well, you can see his reflection kind of. Well, maybe you can't in the video. Uh, let's see if we can sneak around here and get a shot at him. There he is at the bottom. Uh, the last time y'all saw him, I think he was only a couple inches. Um, all the fish in here are eating Southern Delight Veggie Krill and Small Cichlid. Uh, from the Red Tails to the Chara, Cara, Acara, I think it is, maybe, I don't know. Uh, in the Modas, all of those guys are eating Southern Delight Veggie Krill and Small Cichlid. You can see I have my trap door snails in there. Uh, those guys do a bang up job at keeping the excess food down and you know all that stuff because I do power feed this tank very heavily uh, feed it a lot and you know that causes the water changes to go up um, consistently around 25 to 30 ppm when nitrates in this tank now uh, and that's from slacking off for a week so um, like I said, uh, the true green tears, they are now gone. Uh, I need to unplug the system and get it down and out. Uh, so they're gone. And everything is on the up and up in there. Now we'll finish up in the fish room with Big Rig. Uh, this guy is excited. He cannot wait to get inside of his new 300. Uh, it's actually a 350, but I call it a 300. So probably all the water it's going to hold is 300 gallons. But anyways, uh, he cannot wait. Uh, this guy is still eating Southern Delight as well. Uh, he's just, he's an awesome fish. He's the fish room mascot. He's beautiful. He's big. He's bold. And uh, he loves people. And he loves to chase and splash people. Uh, I have another one of the lines from the AP100 going in here. And other than that, guys, the fish room pretty soon uh, will have a 300 gallon right here, along with a 120 sump at the bottom of it. Uh, this will be moved over here as a frag type system. Uh, this whole racking system is going to go away. I have a lot of wood in the garage I need to use. Uh, this tank's going to go away. Those two fish are going to go inside here. Uh, he is going to go inside the 300. This tank is going under the 300, and this wall is going to be cleared out. Uh, and eventually, I'd like to set up a half and half fish room where it's half salt, half fresh. Um, that's my ultimate goal for this year. Uh, and you know, with you know, inside this hobby, you got to set goals for yourself, guys. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just sit down and think about what you want to do inside the hobby, and set some goals for yourself. Do monthly goals, uh, and then or weekly, monthly. 
half year and yearly goals. Uh, sit down, write those down, uh, and do it plausible. I mean, do things that are plausible, stuff that you know that you'll be able to do within a year. Uh, if you want to set up a whole fish room that's all saltwater reef, uh, that can be really expensive. You know, it's a good goal to strive for. Uh, but, you know, it, uh, unless you're making a few hundred thousand dollars a year, it's going to be tough to do something like that unless you do all DIY. And when you do DIY, uh, sometimes there's a learning curve. So you got to, you know, pay attention to that kind of stuff. Just set goals, guys. And you can do everything you want to do. So uh, let's move out to the reef. And we have a special guest that wants to say hi out there. So we'll go out there and check that out. Two, three. Hi. All right, guys. That was our special guest. Uh, it's a mess out here. Setting up a reef tank can be messy as well. You can see my table. My wife is pissed. Uh, well, she's not pissed. She's actually really into the reef. Uh, but you can see how I have all this stuff laying around. Uh, I got my top off right there. Pretty soon we'll be doing a video about an auto top off. Uh, that's going to be really exciting. Uh, I have a really good idea for it. Uh, it's where I can do five gallons at a time and it stays hidden uh, inside this small base here. So we'll start out at the bottom. <clears throat> we'll go through my sump and what it consists of. Uh, it drains right there with the gray hose. Okay, it drains through there. There's a chamber on the other side of that uh, filter sock. And then it spills over through the filter sock and comes out through the eShop's logo right there. Goes into the sump slash heater chamber. Or, I'm sorry, sump slash heater. Protein slash heater chamber. And you see my uh, Marine Land, uh, what is it, a Marine Land 100? Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, it's a Marine Land something protein skimmer. I'm actually going to upgrade this skimmer. Um, I'll be getting a bigger Marine Land that's going to skim the, you know, cahoots out of my uh, tank, which we're going to take a look at soon. Uh, and then you see the heater there, then it flows over. Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry. This is, uh, this whole sump is the eShops RS75 Limited Edition. Uh, you can see it has a few uh, limited edition things like the eShops logo, uh, which is actually the the flow through for the system. And uh, let's see here. I need to change that filter sock. I really do. But uh, okay. And then I have the little base for the skimmer, which is actually a little acrylic piece. Uh, it's like a little stand kind of thing. Uh, goes through there, gets heated, uh, overflows right there, goes through the sponge, and then goes inside the pump chamber where you can see my Kimi Pure Blue. You can see that right there. And guys, I'm not a huge proponent of chemical filtration, but I just wanted to try it uh, because I heard a few people had recommended uh, using carbon and reef tanks. Uh, and then right there, my Rio, is that a 2100? I believe it's a Rio 2100, uh, which is the equivalent, but a little bit stronger than a Mag 7. Yeah, right. Yeah, Mag 7. It's a little bit stronger. Uh, and then it gets pumped right back up into the tank. You can see the overflow section right there. So I have two, I believe, one inch bulkheads. You can see how I rigged it up there. You can see the drain line. And then you can see the return. Uh, with the return line, I did mostly hard on it because uh, with the flexible part, I didn't want to really ruin any of the flow. Uh, and then up here, you can see my power strips. We have my heater, protein skimmer, pumps, and what else plugged up there? Yeah, that's it. And then over here is gonna be my lighting bar. That's, you can see one plugged in there. Let me try to get a focus here. There we go. That's where my uh, light is plugged in. You can see the bottom there. We're doing a deep sand bed. And we'll go up here now, and you can start to see life in my sand bed as well. See right there, check that out. Uh, it's really fun to watch the sand bed because you can see all kinds of worms and stuff. Uh, now guys, as far as recording the reef tank with a light on it, you're gonna have to give me a... a <laughs> You're gonna have to give me a little bit to to get the learning curve on filming the reef tank with the um, with the actinic look. 
Uh, it's a little difficult. It, I mean, the color is just so intense that it kind of drowns out the camera. So I do apologize about that, but uh, just stay with me. We'll get it worked out, don't worry. Uh, the light that I have is fully programmable. Uh, it has cloud cover settings, lightning, storms, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and I can do it all from my phone, so <clears throat> uh, pretty soon I'll figure it out how I can record best with a reef tank. If anybody has any suggestions, drop them in the comments below. But uh, here you can see my grade A uh, uh, buh, 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 Onyx Picasso clowns. Uh, the reason they're grade A is because they actually have helmet heads. And what that means is that stripe that's on the front on their head, it kind of looks like a gladiator helmet and all their stripes meet. Okay, so there's not any uh, breaks in their pattern. Um, what makes them even more of a desirable fish, I, could, I guess you could say, is they both have a patch on their face. And if you look closely, you can see one has a patch on the right side, one has a patch on the left side, and you can see it right up by their eye. Uh, that's a desirable trait inside uh, designer clownfish, uh, especially the Picassos, which these guys are. You can see both of them have that patch, they both have the helmet head, and uh, they both have um, patterns that meet. Uh, so they're really really beautiful clownfish. Uh, these were given to me um, By my new boss. Um, I'm officially full-time at Fish Paradise now um, I've been doing really well up there and learning a lot about saltwater uh, And you know sticking with the freshwater game and stuff like that. Uh, so these were given to me by my boss um, as kind of a, a commemorative type thing. Um, so I'm really lucky to have these guys. Uh, they are the main fish in my display. They are the centerpiece. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you know that um, on aquatic support systems, you know that I also got two yellow clown gobies. And the only other fish after that, um, well, I guess if you've watched this far in the video, uh, I guess you can know. Uh, it's kind of a surprise. It's going to be a Yasha Hasha. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yasha Hasha. I don't ever say it right. Whatever. Um, Gobi with uh, the pistol shrimp that they normally pair up with in the wild. It's a red and white pistol shrimp. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I do have the cleanup crew in here now. Um, I have, let me see, one, two, I believe three zebra turbos. That's these guys right here. Uh, and again, guys, I'm sorry about the quality of the video. I'm going to have to you have to give me a learning curve with that. Uh, I have five Nasarius snails, uh, which are these little guys right back there. You can see. Uh, let me try to. They have like a little tube that comes up. They're really cool. Uh, I have 20 blue leg hermit crabs. Uh, I like the blue legs because they don't get as big as the red legs. And I um i think they do a better job in my opinion you know my opinion purely uh you know i've been learning a lot about salt uh but anyways uh, i have a uh what is this a ca 3500 right there it's an italian made pump they're bulletproof uh, i love them uh, and you know a lot of people go with the mps and stuff like that um i did a lot of research and i don't I'm not saying it looks ugly, I just didn't want a pump sitting right in the middle of my glass. I kind of like it, I don't know, I just like the way the CJs look better. Um, you know, it wasn't a big, or there's another one of the Zebra Turbos back there. Uh, and then from the return, you can see that it both, they both return right here through some lock line uh, to a flathead. And we step back a little bit, you, it's kind of hard to tell. Oh wow, here we go. Uh, it, gets a, it gets the great shimmer effect with this LED. Um, this LED is actually the ones that uh, we use up at the shop. Uh, they grow everything, SPS, uh, LPS, softies, all that stuff. Uh, we actually have an SP, small, small polyps stone. Yeah, we actually have an SPS tank up there we keep all of our SPS's that are for sale and 
they are just gorgeous. Um, we have acans in there. Um, what else do we have? Some Monte Coras. Uh, there's a few torches in there as well. Uh, it's like a little, it's kind of like a frag tank, but on also it has some display pieces in there that you can get. Um, and it also has Acropora. Um, and they're just gorgeous. I mean, it's a gorgeous whole system there. You can see one of my yellow clown gobies. Uh, I got two of these guys, and the reason they're fascinating is because wherever they stop, it looks like they're sitting. Uh, so sometimes they'll stop on the side of the glass, and it looks like they're just sitting on it. Uh, I posted a picture on Facebook at Aquatic Support Community, guys. Uh, if y'all aren't a part of that, go over there and check that out. Uh, it's probably the only place that I post anymore. Uh, so if you want to follow me on Facebook, you can go to my main page uh, where I hardly ever do anything and you can go to Aquatic Support Community and do that. But I posted a picture the other day where one of them was perched out on my, uh, what I think may be a, zoa a zoanthid branch or a paleothoa branch, if I said that right. I'm not completely sure, but uh, y'all will see some corals. And with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a longer video. Thanks for watching till the end if you did. Uh, if you did watch till the end, uh, put Picasso in the, in the comments uh, for the Picasso clownfish here. Let me know how much you love those guys uh, because, in my opinion, they're just gorgeous, and I, I can't get enough of them. Uh, but uh, let me know what y'all think. This is what I'm doing. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm, I'm ending too early here. Uh, make sure you go and check out Aquatic Support Community, guys. Uh, it's, it's a great bunch of guys. I've always said it. Uh, all the links to their YouTube channels are inside my description here on YouTube as well. And uh, make sure you go check them out. Uh, make sure you go check them out. I know uh, Brian Dolly V8, shout out to you, brother. Uh, you're doing a reef tank right now as well. See, look at the way they just perch up there. They're so cool. But... Uh, you're doing a reef tank, and it's kind of funny because me and Brian, uh, we didn't plan that, but it just kind of happened that way where we set it up kind of at the same time. He got his LEDs. Uh, well, he set up his LEDs faster than me. Um, I've had mine for a while. I just didn't get them set up, but uh, it's kind of funny because he set up his LEDs, and I finally got mine set up. So it's kind of like, like we're doing it at the same time, but... He already has corals and stuff, so he's light years ahead of me. So shout out to him and uh, all the guys over at Aquatic Support Community. Uh, also, go check out Fish Paradise on Facebook. If you live in the DFW area, we post deals on there all the time uh, where you can get you know all kinds of great deals. So make sure you all check those out. Um, and with that said, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all are thinking. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. Happy fish keeping. And what? And I have a new gaming channel coming on. No, and what? Stay true. And stay true. To the hobby. Right. <laughs> and stay true to the hobby, guys. Peace out.